I'm Insomniac and this is the Laco B-Dial Automatic Pilot's Watch. I've had this watch since December and I have to say you do get a lot for your money. Let's start with the packaging. Right away I liked what I saw. No square box here. Instead you're pleasantly surprised with this long rectangular corrugated cardboard box which houses a super useful and very nice leather zip up travel case that the watch comes displayed in. Inside the case you'll find a guarantee card and booklet opposite where the watch is displayed full stretch. I really liked your packaging but let's talk about the watch. Laco's a company that has a lot of history behind it. Tell me more. It's a German brand founded in 1925, and I'm not going to bore you with a whole history lesson on the Laco watch company. Wow, that was close. What I can tell you though is that this watch was modeled after their original Flieger watches from World War II, which is pretty cool. This watch is made in Germany, which is indicated at the bottom of the dial in small print. Let's talk movement. Laco calls this movement their Laco 21 automatic movement, which technically is a Miyota Caliper 821A, just with a custom Laco rotor. That rotor obviously means that this watch is self-winding, but you do have the option to hand-wind the watch as well. This movement has a 42-hour power reserve when fully wound and operates at 21,600 beats per hour, or 6 ticks per second. The look of the movement is what you would expect from any good workhorse Miyota movement, clean, precise, and overall solid. In terms of movement accuracy, the claimed accuracy of the 821A movement is minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day, but I've observed an even better rate of accuracy with my specific watch of only about minus 10 seconds per day. How do I know this? Well, I've noticed that my watch is between a minute and a minute and a half behind at the end of every week, so definitely not bad. Speaking of the movement, the back of this watch features a Sapphire Exhibition case back so you can see the Miyota movement in action. Although not the most decorated movement around, I think the 21 joule inner workings of this watch paired with Laco's custom rotor are actually pretty nice. And as a side note, there is a larger version of this watch, but I think this movement looks proportionately perfect with this smaller case. Speaking of the case, this is the 36mm version, so obviously the diameter is 36mm, height is just over 12mm thick, and the lug to lug is 43mm. Those dimensions do two things that you should be aware of. First of all, a 36mm diameter and small 43mm lug to lug means that this watch will look good on any small wrist. Although I don't really have small wrists, yet I like the way this watch looks on me, so it's a usable looking size for most anybody. That includes you also. Second, 12mm stick sounds pretty slim, and on most watches it would be. But because of the small 36mm diameter, the watch does look and feel a bit thicker than 12mm. Back to the case itself, it's a brushed stainless finishing everywhere except on the case back. The underside of the lugs are brushed as well, but the snap-on case back around the sapphire exhibition window is polished. Why? I don't know, but it has a good looking finish to it. The snap-on case back only allows for 5 atmospheres or 50 meters of water resistance, but Flieger style pilot's watches aren't meant to be dive watches, so that's not a big deal. The main crystal up top is also sapphire, and the crown is a beautifully made thick gripped part that matches this watch perfectly in both relative size and style. Moving on to the dial, one word comes to mind when I think of this dial, and that's loom. Every single thing on this dial, minus the Laco logo and the little circle around the hour track, is done in Super Luminova. The outer minute track, including the numbers and indices, the inner hour track, and all three hands are all covered in loom. And this loom is excellent. It might actually be the best loom on any of my watches at this particular time. Even with a low charge, the watch is fully legible and easy to read in the dark. And with a strong charge, the loom lasts for a long while and it's crystal clear for reading the time. There's a little Laco logo printed on the dial just below the 12. The font used for the numerals on this dial is clean and perfectly sized. The minute and hour hands are perfect in execution with regards to differentiating one hand from the other, the hour hand being significantly shorter and wider, reaching out to the outer edge of the hour track, while the minute hand is longer and skinnier, reaching almost to the edge of the minute track. And the second hand is just a straight stick type hand with a black rectangular counterbalance, and I love the fact that it reaches out to the outside edge of the minute track. In my opinion, for this particular dial and style of watch, these hands are perfectly done. Overall, it's a simple dial, but a very effective dial. The strap that comes with this watch is no joke. It's a serious leather strap with the Laco logo very lightly engraved on the buckle and has rivets going through the strap in proper Flieger watch fashion. It measures 18 millimeters wide with no taper and good stitching, but the most impressive part is the thickness of this strap, which measures almost four millimeters thick. 
The one downside to a strap this thick, as you could probably imagine, is that it takes a while to break in a strap this thick. In fact, when I first got this watch, I actually slept with it on for a matter of some number of weeks before I found it pliable enough to consider it comfortable. But once you get past the break-in period, it's a comfortable strap and a fairly comfortable watch overall. As for impressions, it's not very large and it's the opposite of a flashy watch, so it doesn't turn a lot of heads, but I have caught a few people glancing at it, so it definitely doesn't go completely unnoticed. This is the type of watch, though, that rather than catching a lot of attention, does more for your own satisfaction when you're wearing it. Stylistically, it's not a dress watch, most pilot's watches aren't. It looks good with jeans and hoodies and t-shirts and some button downs, but past that it wouldn't really look the part with a blazer or suit or anything too business or dressy. It's a laid back, rugged style watch for everyday wear outside of the office. As for the fit, finish, and quality of this watch, I've been very pleased. It's an old German pilot's watch, and it looks that part 100%, feels that part 100%, and has a toughness and build quality to it that speaks to the type of engineering that Germans are so proud of. Bitte sehr. If I had to rate this watch on a scale from 1 to 10 Mike Tysons, I would give it 8.5 Mike Tysons. It's not the most versatile watch in my collection, nor is it the most impressive, but it has a soul and a style of its own, and it has been a pleasure to own since December. Well, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you want to support this channel, go down below and check out my patron page. Sign up for that. That would be nice. Otherwise, if you own one of these watches or something similar, or you just want to comment on the video just because, leave a comment down below. I like to hear from all of you. Share the video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that yet. I will see you all next time.